Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 6, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was pretty good, and it's great to have the flashback, although it wasn't like a normal episode, because it was a f kind of filler episode. It's what Eric Wallace describes as an interlude episode. Actually, the timeline changes are going to have a big effect on the rest of the season as teased by the ending scene. So I'm not gonna say it's like a full on filler episode, but like the Royal Flush Gang showing up and everything, that stuff was just to fill in the time in order to have these changes happen. But apart from that, there was some very good moments and we had the return of Eddie Thorne, we had Iris in the past, Joe in the past, Cecile in the past. We got a little bit of insight into what happened behind the scenes whilst Barry was in the coma that we never got in season one. So it's interesting to definitely go back. But we start the episode and we're gonna go through it chronologically like this. So it's a flashback and we get them talking about the love that Barry and Iris have and then Bart and Nora after the wedding vow renewals return to the future. And just shortly after they return to their flat, it seems like they live together in what looks like Barry and Iris's old apartment. Bart looks over at Jay Garrick's helmet and it says the Crimson Comet and it looks really cool and he's all nostalgic and he's like, oh, you know, I wish Jay was alive and blah blah blah. Like he says stuff in regards to that. And then Jay, out of nowhere, shows up, alive and well, the helmet's gone, and the timeline changes have been confirmed at this point, and it's because of the temporal wave that goes over them just before Jay comes into the room. So, we knew that this was going to change, and we knew that them pointing out Jay's helmet was going to be him returning in this episode, because it was rumoured a while ago that Jay would be back. And so he plays like a decent role in this episode. He has more of like a kind of talkative part where he references quite a lot of things from the past. I feel like this episode is big on references. Like there was many things that they're setting up for the future. I mean, there is a huge one, which we're going to talk about as we get to it in regards to a certain person showing up. But let's move on. So Godspeed was defeated by Impulse in the future. It's revealed by Jay. And the fact that Joan doesn't exist in this version of the timeline, it's someone called Aunt Rose, Jay's wife, and obviously Jay is surprised at their reaction, like they knew Rose all their life in this new timeline, but because it hasn't completely set, those memories aren't in their minds. And then importantly, Jay goes on to reference that Bart one day would be a really great Flash, and so this episode was a lot about Bart and Nora's doubts about themselves as heroes, as people. And with Bart, it's all about living up to his father's legacy. And same thing goes for Nora, although she doesn't have that same kind of feeling. Although they were cool references to a potential future where Bart is the Flash, I thought it was weird that they specifically mentioned Bart as the Flash when Nora's there, and it's clear that Nora is actually much more advanced than Bart. So I would say, you know, she would be in the running first. But I get the idea that they're going for because it's this kind of legacy father-son thing, I guess. But let's move on to the next thing. So they realize all of these timeline changes and they are completely shocked about them as they go to the Flash Museum, obviously in 2049. But really, you shouldn't be that shocked if you're the children of Barry Allen. I'm sure they've heard of his time travel escapades in the past and the fact that he's changed so many different things. So... To me, it's kind of a little bit unbelievable that they would be so shocked. And I get it that they're inexperienced and they make these mistakes in the past, but they should definitely know about the effects of time traveling and the fact that they've literally been told in the past, you know, you can't come back all the time, you have to be careful. But Bart and Nora got very sloppy at the end of last season with them sticking around for so long and basically defeating Godspeed, setting Godspeed back in the past and getting him on the cosmic treadmill. It all changed everything, and so we get to see that through a couple of flashbacks, and pretty much most of the episode is just Bart, Nora, and a couple of other characters. Most of our main characters, barring Joe, aren't actually in the episode very much. Barry shows up in a couple of scenes, however, 
in the middle part of the episode, he is mainly just in flashbacks. And they are like brief flashbacks, I think, just to try and involve Barry a bit to remind us we're watching The Flash. Because it's right, this episode did feel like an interlude episode because of that big lack of Team Flash. And at the end of the episode, we did get the return of Team Flash. And that was great to see because, yeah, it's amazing going around and seeing these different things and time traveling around with Bartonora, who I really do like. But at the end of the day, I want to see Barry, I want to see The Flash, I want to see Team Flash, and I guess I like it when they're more involved with Team Flash. However, this episode was quite fun, and it was very heavy on the humor. I don't know if even half of it landed, because actually quite a lot of it was a bit cringe, especially with the Royal Flush gang showing up, and just the way that it all happened, like her walking past Bartonora and like going inside their minds and hearing the word metahumans and being like oh yeah let's form a team and let's do this heist because I just heard the word metahumans no like it's very unbelievable to me I feel like it's all very circumstantial and it happened because they wanted it to happen like I'm talking about the writers so it didn't feel natural to me in that case with the royal flush gang who I am not a fan of and I have no idea why they keep on returning like it's kind of ridiculous we've had them twice this season they showed up in one of the first episodes in Armageddon and they came back again like I guess they must really like them but they are so average and they are constantly cringe like they are dropping so many bad puns it's really hard to watch with them I'm not gonna lie that is Obviously the worst bit of the episode every time that they showed up because man, especially that casino scene I was just trying to hold it in. I was like, oh my god. What is going on here? Okay, so let's go back to the future So we have Barton Nora at the flash museum and so they reference booster gold who has just Premiered on legends of tomorrow. So that is a reference to him showing up and obviously Booster Gold is a time traveling hero so it makes sense if they're going to reference any hero that they would reference him. And the other big changes is the Chief of Police is now Joe West and that was never supposed to happen and also Joe was shot. We know that this is the reason that they go back to New Year's Eve 2013 in order to change this one event to change the course of history. However it's made pretty clear to us that Bart and Nora don't know enough about time travel and manipulating time so they need a little bit of help and this help comes in the form of someone called Avery. Now as soon as the name came up and I mean we saw her in the trailer so I was like hmm who is this person like she seemed to have a significant role and she did have a significant role in this episode and so if you guys know Avery in the comics she's actually Avery Ho she's a speedster superhero sometimes known as the Flash of China and this version of the character in the TV show knows a lot about time travel or at least she's researching it and there is this great conversation between Bart and her super awkward and I love that kind of tension that they had in that scene but obviously, when she's like, oh, I'm from the future, and he's like, oh, me too, and then he sees her research, there was an instant connection that was made right there, and I do think that was probably some of the best stuff in this episode was all to do with Avery. Like, I'm actually super interested about what's going to be happening with her, and you have to remember, the version of Avery we're seeing is from 2013, so if we skip forward to the present day, which we do at the end of the episode, She's actually going to be quite a lot older. She's going to be more experienced and maybe at the point that we meet her in present day with all of her research to time travel and seeing Bart and Nora and then being speedsters and the Flash. Maybe she studied a way to get powers herself and she's going to become a version of the Flash that we've seen her as in the comics at some time this season, I would guess. And so talking of new characters, well, this isn't a new character, but this is the first time we've seen him in a long time. I'm of course referring to Eddie Thorne, so it's great to have Rick Cosnett back in this episode. And so Bart and Nora meet him in the past, and they have like this weird reaction when he first shows up. And then they fake for the entire episode that they're interns in order to try and get what they want and to be able to be at these crime scenes. And so, yeah, Eddie doesn't have, like, that much of a big role. Like, I think one of the biggest scenes in the episode was definitely between him and Iris. 
you can see that instant connection that they made at the New Year's Eve party in 2013. And so it was really nice to see this kind of meet cute that they had because it was completely out of nowhere. I don't believe we've ever seen that before, like in regards to their relationship. And so it doesn't really give us a good idea about like what Eddie is going to be doing this season. We know he's going to be in at least two more episodes that was announced and he's going to be like an amalgamation of different characters but it hasn't been revealed what is actually going to be happening to Eddie but I'm going to presume whatever happens to him is a big effect of Bart and Nora's timeline changes. But let's move on to the big thing. So Bart saves Joe, that was the reason that they came back in the past, but they realized the timeline has changed even more. And so then you have these four villains who plan the robbery. Turns out that they are the Royal Flush Gang. They have their usual cringe lines. They're like, no one will stop us. I'm my queen and stuff like that. Oh my God, like, please, can we stop with these villains? I mean, next episode, we've even got Goldface back. Oh. I don't know what to say. And so by the point at the episode where Bart is starting to question his future and if he can ever be the Flash whilst he's in the same spot that Barry was struck by lightning in his lab at CCPD, this is at the point where I was like, oh my god, we've had like no Barry or Iris or Team Flash members apart from Joe in this episode. And it kind of hit because I was like, uh, there's something off about this episode. The humor is like way higher than normal. Like there is punchlines every few scenes. And obviously you get the pep talks, you get these emotional moments like this. But without Barry, and I get why they were including the flashbacks to just remind us that this is Barry's show and Barry is around. It very much so felt like a kind of episode to bridge a gap where Grant wasn't around or you know some of the other cast wasn't around because they were all given a break to give this episode to some other characters which is kind of a blessing and curse because it's a good episode for Bart and Nora but then it kind of impacts the flow of the season apart from the fact that it is linked to what is going to be coming next due to the timeline changes like I mentioned before but let's go back to Avery so Avery is visited in her labs at Fast Track Labs by Bart and Nora. It must be mentioned that Fast Track in the comics is the superhero name of actually another speedster, not Avery Ho, but in fact Mina Darwin, who was a big part of the Flash's comics when Godspeed was introduced in Rebirth. And so it's interesting that they're twisting it. I wonder if maybe she's working under Mina Darwin, or have they gone and changed things and Fast Track Labs is going to be the inspiration for why maybe Avery in the future when she becomes a speedster is going to be called Fast Track. Now that is just a theory and I like when they do these little changes. And at this point because Bart and Nora are desperate for someone like Avery's help because she knows so much and she can be very useful. They go to her and they explain that they're actually from the future. She's completely shocked by this. And then Avery goes on to explain that the heist must happen but they can save everyone because that is fixed in time. However, the amount of casualties isn't. So I really like that we have another new, very smart character who could potentially replace Cisco. Obviously, we do have Chester right now who is very smart, but I really like the fact that she has this legacy from the comics and she's going to become a speedster at one point, probably when she shows up in 2022. And I really do like that connection that was established in this episode between her and Bart and they even have a kiss, which was very cute. And so shortly after this scene with Avery, we go to the actual casino heist. Royal Flush Gang show up and they're all in their makeup and everything like we've seen them many times before. And so as always, they deliver many cringe lines that are all chest related and is like pun central and at one point they realize that Bart is there and Bart has been zipping people away but they're not entirely sure. She tries to sort of figure out the situation, the queen that is, and that's at the point where she realizes something is off and Bart pops up out of nowhere. She tries to read his mind and she finds out that he's from the future but somehow like something in his head kind of skewed her off from actually believing it. And so after being flung over one of the tables, they leave and Nora is left to figure out how to stop the bombs and where are the bombs. And Bart is like, go get excessive. 
the puns are literally like happening 24 7 in this episode but then after they successfully stop the bombs and there is the fireworks in the sky obviously that isn't the actual fireworks from the bomb like the bomb goes off and then there's fireworks because it's actually new year's eve i actually kind of forgot that it was but it makes sense because it's kind of disguised and there wouldn't be much panic and so after that, everyone outside the casino explains to the police that someone streaked them outside. Obviously the streak, a reference to what the flash was called initially. And at this point we see Iris in the past looking very young and Iris and Eddie, they meet for the first time. Like I said before, it's kind of this meet cute moment. This was definitely one of the best small bits in the episode because it was just so nice to have someone like Iris back on screen. Like I said, I've been feeling their absence in this episode and even though Barry did show up like Grant was in one of the scenes when they were in Barry's room in Star Labs while he was in the coma it was good to see one of our characters actually talking obviously I'm excluding Joe because Joe played a big part in this episode and like I mentioned before I enjoyed all of his moments and it's weird like Joe looks so young I don't know how they did it did they de-age them or did they just give Joe like a different kind of haircut because I know that in the past he had like a slightly different beard and different things like that and same goes for Iris and so as they're about to leave we have Joe and Cecile who come back together for the first time since that very awkward conversation earlier in the episode obviously Cecile is still dealing with her divorce that moment at the end basically teased what would eventually happen with them reuniting because if you guys remember Cecile was actually there in season one but she barely was in it and like she came back like two seasons three seasons later and then she suddenly became a big character because they created that connection between her and joe and here we are going back in time kind of peppering in the details about their history so before bart and nora leave to the future they have a small little ccpd photo with eddie joe and the team and so bart actually does one thing before he leaves again for the future he goes and meets Avery because he promised that he would meet her and she reveals that basically he's changed her life. She, he has confirmed time travel and everything that she was working towards. It's actually something attainable and it isn't completely nuts like a lot of people would believe. They kiss and then she's like, see you sometime again McFly which I thought was a really nice reference to Back to the Future. It's literally what happens all the time in those films like Marty goes off somewhere and you know there is these changes to the characters around them so we're definitely going to be seeing more of Avery and that last moment I thought was very interesting as she went over to the door and saw the flash of lightning. I feel like that was a small teaser for what's to come and the fact that I believe since 2013 to 2022 since this new timeline has set in and it is in fact a new concrete timeline although there is still more changes as evidenced by the next scene Avery would have been working on everything and I think she has got powers I think that she's going to become a sweet star and we're going to see her at some point in the season probably not until the episode where Bart returns because I'm not sure when Bart is returning but I know that they are coming back in maybe the next like five episodes afterwards. I don't know for how many episodes, probably just like one or two again. But definitely Avery is going to return when Bart is going to return and I look forward to seeing her because I thought actually her story and Bart's story was the most interesting part of this episode. Let's move on to the final couple of scenes. We go to the future 2049 in the Flash Museum. Jay's with them and Jay reveals that he fought Nazis and he had all these different things because of him being a speedster. He was able to go back and change different things and he's a speedster and he makes a great point which I pointed out during this video that all speedsters make mistakes and they're literally the children of Barry Allen, like the guy who messes up the timeline all the time. So they shouldn't feel that bad and it's kind of in their family legacy to be honest. But Joan is back and Jay is happy and he's not mad at them, although they thought, you know, he would be completely mad at them for messing things up. But in his case, things have changed for the better so he's not mad. And just as Jay leaves, there is this great reference. He shouts out something like, I'm off to see President Luther. And you're like, holy crap, they did not just do that. But then he reveals he was joking. But 
it's a nice future reference because if you guys didn't know in the comics Luthor does become the president a couple of times and it's just great that they're referencing Lex since Supergirl has ended and it just kind of gave me like a little ray of hope that we're going to see John Cryer's Lex Luthor once again because I would love to see him return. So I love that reference. That was a personal favorite moment for me as well in this episode. And so talking of changes, we go back to the present day and we see Team Flash. They have like a nice little interaction. It's quite brief. And as they all go off to celebrate and go to Paris, Iris's hair comb is left on the sofa and the camera lingers there for just a second before the comb disappears. Now, obviously the comb isn't important, that's not a huge timeline change, but it's just a signifier of what's to come and the fact that even though they changed some things, the timeline has altered and things aren't the way that they're supposed to be. So I definitely think that the villain of this season, whoever it's going to be, is going to be caused by these timeline changes and this is just a teaser of what's to come. Again, lots of people have been theorizing it's going to be Eddie related because he's showing up in more episodes. I mean, you even got Firestorm, Ronnie Raymond coming back. There is lots of different characters who are going to be showing up, probably because of these changes. So what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down in the comments down below. I would really appreciate hearing your thoughts. But for now, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.